praise. Shall we pray? God, thank you for this. For this moment. For this miracle. For this message. For this movement. For this way that you have made. Thank you, God, for this.
down into the depths of death and preached to the doorway of deliverance. He went down into the shadows of Shoal and showed himself to be the sunshine, S-O-N, sunshine. And after, after conducting a three-day preaching crusade in hell, early on Sunday morning, Jesus got up just like he said he would. He got up because death could not keep him down. He got up breaking the shackles of sin. He got up with all power in his hand and he and we noted last week that he got up in the same place where he went down. In the same grave where they laid him down is the same grave where he got up. In, in the same cave whose entrance was covered with a rock, he got up. In the same place where they buried him, God resurrected him and he got up. And we also suggested last week that just because he got up did not mean he was in a hurry to get out. He folded the grave clothes that Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus buried him in. He, he folded the napkin that was about his head and placed it in an area all by itself. Because when Jesus got up, he wasn't in a hurry to get out. And so today we resume our It's Time to Get Up series where we ended last week. After the women came and discovered that the grave cave was empty, after they reported to the disciples, after John and Peter ran to the grave cave and investigated for themselves, after John and Peter confirmed the women's report that the grave cave is empty and they leave to go lock themselves away after seeing the empty tomb. John 20 11 says Mary stood there weeping outside of the tomb. And she kept bending over and looking in the tomb. And the text suggests that she is looking for answers. She is looking for understanding. She is looking for an explanation. And one of, on one of her peeps inside of the grave cave, she sees two beings who were not there before. The text calls them angels, but Mary does not know who they are. Mary did not see even where they came from. Mary does not even know how they got in the cave themselves. But when she sees them and when they see her, they ask her, why is she crying? And she says, I'm crying because they have taken away my Lord and I do not know where they have taken him. And the whole time she is talking, the Bible says she is still weeping. Don't miss that. Don't miss this, y'all, that Mary is talking and crying at the same time. And the image of Mary standing there outside of Jesus' tomb, weeping and crying and looking for the answers and searching for the understanding is eerily reminiscent of images we saw this past week of Elizabeth Toledo. Elizabeth is the mother of Adam Toledo, the 13-year-old boy who was shot and killed by a police officer in Chicago last month and the video of the shooting was made public just last week. The image of Mary crying and looking for answers at the tomb is eerily reminiscent of the images we saw this past week of Kathy Wright. Kathy is the mother of Dante Wright, the 20-year-old black man outside of Minneapolis who called his mother last Sunday afternoon as he was being pulled over for having an air freshener hanging from his rearview mirror. Dante was shot and killed by Officer Kim Potter because she says 
she accidentally grabbed her gun on her right side instead of her taser, which was on her left side. Mary, Mary, Mary at the tomb is reminiscent of Sade McCullough and Sherelle Johnson. Sade is the woman who recorded the video of the young black man. Someone said his name is DeAndre being assaulted by Army Sergeant Jonathan Pentland near Sade's home outside of Columbia, South Carolina just this past Monday. Sade recorded it. Sherelle posted it. And all of the world got to see Army Sergeant Jonathan Pentland threaten an assault a black man just for walking down the street. Just like we saw black and Latino Army Lieutenant Karen Nazario be pepper sprayed in uniform by police officer Joe Gutierrez in December 2020. And that video came out this past week too. Lieutenant Nazario is related to Eric Gardner, the black man choked to death by police in New York in 2014 for a selling loose cigarettes outside of a convenience store. And now let me come closer this way because the image of Mary standing outside of Jesus' tomb is reminiscent of Miyoshi Johnson and Tamara Lawrence. Miyoshi and Tamara are the two black mothers who spoke at the Alindo ISD school board meeting this past week describing how their sons were auctioned off in mock slave trades created by white students over Snapchat and the school board has yet to do anything meaningful about it. And the images of Tamara and Miyoshi, Sherelle and Sade and Kathy and Elizabeth, images from events and episodes that have unfolded just this past week are just She is weeping and crying. She is searching for answers. She is looking for understanding. She is crying and talking at the same time. And Jesus, who had walked away from the tomb, Jesus, who was not there when the women came early in the morning, Jesus, who was not there when the disciples came later to see for themselves, Jesus, who was shows up right now. Perhaps Jesus comes back to meet Mary at the tomb as his way of saying, Mary, I'm tired of this ish. Unless I get accused of being a cussing preacher, let me hasten to tell you that ish is slang for issue. <laughs> I know some of y'all know the cuss word that Ish 
is slain for issue. That's why even though Jesus had left the grave cave entrance, he returned to address Mary's issue. Mary Magdalene, the one who is not a prostitute, as Pope Gregory erroneously said in 591 CE, and people have foolishly repeated over the years, Mary Magdalene is not a prostitute. Mary Magdalene, out of whom the Bible only says Jesus cast seven spirits. Mary Magdalene, who followed Jesus faithfully, Jesus comes back to the grave cave and engages Mary in conversation. And near the end of the conversation, Jesus calls her by her name. She did not recognize who Jesus was at first, but then Jesus called her name. She was still talking through tears at first, but then Jesus called her name. And when Jesus calls her name, she gets a better understanding. When Jesus calls her name, her emotional state improves. When Jesus calls her name, everything about her seems to change. And this is why, like Jesus, it's time for us to get up because there's some Marys out there who are in need of our ministry. And the text says, the text says that because Jesus was tired of the problems, because Jesus was tired of the ish, because Jesus was tired of the issues, he called Mary's name and changed her perspective. And that's the first point that I need to leave with somebody today who understands it's time to get up. This is the first lesson I want to leave with somebody who is tired of the ish, that God calls your name to change your perspective. Uh-huh, yes, 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 God, God gives you a whole new way of looking at things. God gives you a whole new way of understanding life's occurrences. God gives you a whole new insight into understanding life's events. When God calls your name, he changes your perspective. For this is Mary's problem, even as she comes to the tomb she is limited in her perspective. Mary approaches the tomb from the perspective of people and problems. She approaches the tomb from the perspective of remembering what the people had done. The people had betrayed him. The people had arrested him. The people had whipped him and called for him to be crucified. The people led him and hung him on an old rugged cross. The people mocked him and made fun of him and the people stood there and watched him die. And once he was dead, the people kept on causing problems. People caused their, caused their problems by placing him in the tomb before giving him a proper burial. People even caused her problems asking for a heavy stone to seal the of the cave. People ask for a guard to watch the tomb lest somebody come and steal his body by night. And as Mary approaches the tomb, she is limited in her perspective. She can only see what the people have done. And she can only see the problems that the people have created. And I need to stop right there and tell somebody today that perhaps the reason why your situation does not seem to change is because you keep looking at it from the perspective of selfish people. Because you can have a blessing right in front of your face and not even know it. You can have a miracle right in front of your face and not even know it. You can have an opportunity of blessing for God himself right in front of you and not even know speaks to her. She is only seeing and hearing from her own perspective. Oh, but 
a new perspective. When Jesus calls her name, she could see him for who he really was. And I came to tell somebody that just like Mary, it's time to adjust your spiritual spectacle and get you a new perspective. Because you're still focusing on what people did to you and said to you and the problems that they have caused for you. But that's the wrong perspective. You're still talking about who doesn't like you and who's plotting against you. And that is the wrong perspective. You're still worrying about how big your problem is, how powerful the enemy is. And that is the wrong perspective. You're still worried about gun violence like it can't be prevented, about mass shootings like they can't be stopped, about police brutality like we cannot demand an end to it. You keep focusing on that as if it's the end all be all and that is the wrong perspective because I told you time and time again that skyscrapers only seem tall when you look at them from the ground. Mountains only seem big when you look at them by standing next to them. But those same skyscrapers that seem tall from the ground, they get shorter and shorter when you ride in an airplane because the airplane gives you a new perspective. Huh, the same mountains that seem big become miniature when you see them from a perspective of an eagle soaring through the sky. It's not that the size of the object has changed, it's that your perspective has changed. And when God calls your name, it gives you a new perspective. Problems only seem big when you see them from the perspective of people, but all of your problems become small when you see them from the perspective of God. Enemies look enlarged from an earthly perspective, but from a divine perspective, he will take your enemies and make them your footstool. Your sins seem like scarlet from a human perspective, but from a divine perspective, he washed them and cleansed them whiter than snow. Your sickness may look severe from a human perspective, but from a divine perspective, with his stripes, you are already healed. Your failures may look big and final from a human perspective, but from a divine perspective, your latter days will be better than your former days. Death looks definitive from an earthly perspective, but from a divine perspective, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of one of his saints. All I'm trying to say is that God calling your name is telling us it's time to get up because God is trying to change our perspective. And not only is God giving us a new perspective, but because God is tired of this ish, God has also given us a new purpose. That's the second point I want to leave with you, that God is giving you a new purpose. Yes, 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 that's, that's what God does for Mary. He, he, he not only gives her a new perspective on looking at the grave and a new perspective on looking at her problems, God a new perspective at looking at death and a new perspective on looking at defeat but because of her new perspective Mary also finds herself possessing a new purpose don't miss that don't miss that don't miss that her new purpose is not in addition to her new perspective but her new purpose is because of her new perspective in other out of your perspective. How you see yourself will inform how you carry yourself. How you see yourself will inform what you do with yourself. How you see yourself in life will inform how you live your life. Your, your purpose arises from your perspective. If you don't believe Look at Mary. For years, Mary had been a faithful follower of Jesus. Mary. 
Mary was a leading lady and she fundraised up for Jesus. While everybody else was a talker, Mary was a doer. She knew how to make things happen. If Jesus was in Galilee, she went to Galilee. If Jesus went to Jerusalem, she went to Jerusalem. If Jesus said stay here, she stayed where he told her to stay. When Jesus cleansed her of those seven unclean spirits, Mary became his faithful follower. This is how she understood her purpose in life. That's why she was there when he traveled the Judean countryside. That, that's why she was there as he entered Jerusalem. That's why she was there on the night that he was betrayed. She was there on the night that he was beaten. She was there when they crucified him. She was there when he died. She was there when he was buried. And she was there three days later to anoint his body. Because since he cleaned her up, she understood that her purpose and was to be Your purpose is to go there and do something about the brutality 
prayers. The third and finally, God is giving us a new passion. John 2018 says that Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things to her. The first time when she came, she told them the tomb was empty.
hellacious week. And while I was about to preach a different way, when I kept hearing all these stories and stories, and I saw these women, these mothers, and there were fathers there too, in these communities, Barbara, 
You know. 